Donovan, I believe your magic is faulty. You may want to take a look at it. As I said, you merely need to believe hard enough. Perhaps you'll try and again at another him. point. That is how magic works, says Khalid, backing him up. Knowledge is belief, and belief is power. By the way, if you want to really learn how to fly, it's a lot easier once you give up your earthly corporeal form, he says, sharpening his knife. Or, might I suggest... You're gonna stab me, the... Khalid? <laughs> no, nothing so cruel. This is a misericord, or mercy dagger. It gives people... Mercy. It doesn't have a stabbing point. It sounds a lot right. like stabbing. Oh, I thought a Mercy no, Cord was like a garrot wire. No, although people confuse it for that. No, the Mercy Dagger is a triangular blade that's designed uh, specifically to cut people's throats when you can't give them mer uh, when you can't give them triage in the battlefield or when their illness has passed on. Kind of like a punch dagger. No, no, it, it's a cutting only. It's a it's like a triangular slap, like a triangular prism. Oh, okay. I'm just you can not... only use it to slice somebody's th uh, femoral arteries. He's not imagining it right, I guess. Yeah, it's oh, not a punch. You're thinking of a punch. Talk about that. You're thinking of a punch dagger, so and actually, you're right. Some misericords are punch daggers. This is specifically the the slicing kind, and you're right. Misericords often used for stilettos, but the the misericord in Iron Claw or Misericordio is specifically the triangular prism kind. Um, it's carried by doctors and religious people. Yeah, quick death. Uh, quick as we can in the Middle Ages. Let us know if you Or, you know, die. get that bad blood out of you. Get all that bad blood. Um, speaking of bad blood, Eldritch, you are taken to the roof of uh, the um, Order of St. John, where uh, they will take you to the hospital. Uh, the hospital has four or five other people in it, also in beds, also, but they are way sicker than you. They're coughing. They have uh, spittoons next to them filled with vile black fluids. Um, the, 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 these are the consumptive, uh, you know, uh, the melancholic, the really sick. Yeah, I understand. Just a quick question. What's the relationship between St. George and uh, St. John? Uh, your Order of Saint, uh, I think it's actually Jor, uh, it's, it's J-O-I-R-E. Yeah, I think I keep anglinizing it. Right. Uh, Church of Saint Jor is a hyperdulian order. Uh, it is, uh, people are venerating a saint, and so they just, it, a, bu a bunch of Samara people came to the Deltans and said, uh, yeah, we want to set up a church. And the Anatolian said, okay, why? Uh, we don't like your religion. And it's like, well, we can, we'll help you work with the Westerners and you know, be a political move. And the Anatolian said, do you have any reason to be here at all? I said, um, it turns out that Jor died on this spot and their remains are interred here. So we're going to make a church to them. And it's like, sure, whatever. Veneration of saints. Uh, so me, me being an Athanasian doesn't really mean anything to any of these people. Well, these guys are hospitallers, so um, they are effectively paladins. Um, paladin orders are called capitulary orders, and capitulary or your church is part of the Church of, of Penitence, and your church is owned by the Church of Penitence, which is owned by this, and it's part of a big, long hierarchy that you're established by that. A capitulary order is when the uh, pontiff or pope signs off and, set, and basically creates a bunch of um, a small organization of warriors that respond directly to the pope's orders. They're basically Templars. That's what a capitular order is. They, they don't. Uh, they don't have the usual order of you know low-level sextons that report to um, uh, fathers that report to bishops that report to. Metropolitan support to prelates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These guys only take orders from the Pope. That's it, amazing. I like it. Right. So basically, if you you know, if a if a bishop or deacon showed up and tried to order them around, they say, nope, not without a letter from the Pope. I bet the Pope is a mouse, isn't he? Uh, I think the current Pope is actually a boar. Uh, that's weird with the Dolaro being mostly boars. Uh, it's actually a political move that the current pope is actually uh, from Doloro territory. But when we'll get into that, uh, what we're going to get into today is that um, you are sick, and they see you, and you look legitimately sick. 
come back. I can't afford to have you buried. I mean, when they start poking uh, uh, a um, a mouse, oddly enough, uh, in a blood in a robe that is covered in a variety of different fluids, comes over and says, "Oh, sorry, I'm in such a hurry to treat all my patients, I didn't have a chance to wash my hands after I treated the last one." I'm sure that's not important. <laughs> it being the Middle Ages and all. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, look, here's this rusty, bloody scalpel. I'll just use this to excise the gangrenous stuff on you. Ah, uh, old trusty. I've used it eight <laughs> times today. Nine times charm. Have we heard the uh, experience yet, or whatever his name is? Whose name? Have we saved the, the, the dying guy yet? Uh, oh, well, anyway. Awesome awesome awesome. Awesome. The, the doctor comes to examine you to see just what dire state. Eldritch, do you allow him to examine you or do you think weird? <laughs> do you wiggle your booty at him? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Are, are you Facts. Practice, are you muted? Might not be there. You go, you didn't, did you type that he was not here? Uh, nowhere. I don't see anything. Ractus, you still with us? He's still in the call. Oh, oh my god, dead air. Oh, time to okay. shift scenes. We'll we'll come back. Um, all right. So ra- they leave Rakdus in that care. Um, the night passes and nothing obvious happens. Do you guys just want to wait this out in the ship, or do you want to do something weird? Uh, I might forecast our fortune specifically with these uh smuggled goods as it is right now. The stars are still in the sky. Go ahead and make a roll of mind and academics. You get an extra D twelve if you have astrology. Oh, I'm sorry, and don't forget to roll your Supernatural. It's Academics and Supernatural. Academics know where the stars are, and Supernatural is figure out what they mean. All right. Defining. Did I already combine these? No, so let me go ahead and add all the extra dice I have for Academics. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a lot of below threes, but uh, two in the end. Uh, yeah, it is portentous here. Uh, you will have the tower inverted, which means there will be great change. Oh, sorry, that's tarot. Um, the uh, the fact that the uh, three coachmen have lined up uh, on the horizon to a uh, uh, bodes an auspicious change. Uh, a- a- and a wise person will be able to seize the opportunity and move forward for the better. But a ca- uh, now is not the time for caution. I see. And I know exactly how I will advise the captain. <clears throat> yep, so there you go. And I will suggest uh, captain. Yes? In the morning, I suggest uh, immediately heading out and... Uh, or you said there were carriages on the horizon, right, Rafferty? Um, or was that just part of the vision? No, that was just, uh, I'm, it's astrology. I'm okay, sense. okay, so the, the figure. Just, okay, uh, I would suggest then in the morning, simply going around and name-dropping the lady to get these off of her hands as quickly as possible. Okay, so you guys just kind of <clears throat> waited out. Right, unless the captain wants to go out in the middle of the night to do it, <clears throat> which would be his prerogative. Uh, I have no desire to be wandering around at night. Okay, well, the sun... Okay, so I think uh, Arrakis is back. You alright, Arrakis? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so uh, do you do anything weird when the doctor probes you? Or... No, I mean, I let him do his expertise. Okay. Uh, hmm, Dr. West, have you been near water lately, like submerged or suffocated? We're on an island. Island, yes, <laughs> I've been around water. Uh, I almost drowned, I want to say, uh, eight days ago. So. You have a case of the almost drowned <laughs> Sounds it's medical. Term for it. Uh, it's treatable. Uh, I was, now please, uh, sit with us. And just pray. So he's going, uh, do you accept 
the Church of Air and the Shining Light into your heart. I mean, I already did. It's the reason why I can cast Holy Magic. Okay, you're due to this prayer thing. When we ask, if you accept, you're supposed to say yeah. And with you as well. All right, so I need you to go ahead and roll your will. That's three successes. We will remove injured and sick. I don't really like these guys. Uh, as you feel, well, you're also a treatable illness, so they will. You feel the shining light uh, enter into your heart. By the way, this is white magic. It's fine. I'm not technically undead. Oh, you have got an extra D12 if you have piety, which I don't think you have. Oh yeah, no, I didn't use the uh, the book of mystery stuff on my character. Okay, but you could. Athanasia is, works that way. That's where I got the Athanasia stuff. There you go. Uh, you know, it's not that I don't see why like healing magic and necromancy are treated separately. They're really two sides of the same coin. Um, but don't say that out loud. Or that blindly. Yeah, no, those are internal um, thoughts. I have to avoid the purple cloaks. Uh, yes. So, um, the next day, uh, a bunch of, uh, shrews and mice are going to appear on the jetty, uh, at, at that dawn. Um, all one of them is wearing white robes. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, but yeah, Eldritch, you're healed and just put you to bed. And you get your first good night's sleep. Solid ground. Yeah. Do you do anything weird, or do you enjoy actually being able to sleep in a bed that doesn't rock and toss every few minutes? Oh, yeah, no, I'll enjoy a good rest. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the next day, basically, uh, an entourage of about 12 workers come down and kind of wave to the ship. Uh, hey, you up there! Um, the nocturnal crew should probably have the crane ready by now, or if they, not... They, they do. Uh, I need to talk to who uh, your captain, whoever's in charge. My name is Trevor. Trevor? I'm, yeah, well, Trevor, Trevor Sando, the shrew. You can just call me Trevor. Everyone does. Uh, that would I, need, be... I need someone to come down and talk to me. Apparently, you're here to drop something off or something. I'll go talk to him. Okay, um, all right. I guess you ride the crane and look really dashing while you do it. Shh. Remember the feather, Captain. <laughs> Shut up, Don. <laughs> yes, hello. My name is Trevor, and I'm one of the sextants here at the uh, Order of St. John. So that basically I'm one of the people who maintains the grounds. And um, Anyway, they sent me down here. To ask, uh, apparently your Captain Indigo? Indoril. Indoril, yes, Captain Indoril. And that's a ring on your finger, so you're supposed to be important? He, 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 not, he's not particularly. He, he doesn't look sarcastic, he looks a lot more confused. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we normally we uh, get indulgences, but they're usually brought by ships flying... Uh, uh, a different flag. We're not really due for anything. So, um, do you have a letter of introduction or something? I have my letter of introduction. Okay. Um, before I let you know, um, we are all children of the light. All of us are seeking wisdom both in this world and the next. So, I believe, he, he, he says, gesturing with his hands, in an expansive way. I believe in the sincerity of your cause. Before I let you unload any mysterious boxes onto my jetty, I'd like permission to come aboard and look at them first. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Since I'm a shrew and not a bird. Uh, oh, yeah, he gets aboard the ship just fine. 
That would be embarrassing if you botched this. Oh, if he just fell right off the crane. Sploosh! And then sinks out of sight. It's like, well, that's... Perhaps you could use a feather. <laughs> Perhaps you <laughs> could have used a feather. Um, well, the crew are going to say, well, we're a little embarrassed, sir. Um, when you had that little ruffle with the uh, bribery official, we moved a lot of the cargo around and put stuff. And now I think only Eldritch knows where this stuff is. <laughs> That's okay. I can find it easily. Uh, what skills do you have useful in finding the crap? That Searching, ransacking, and uh, general observation. Um, I, I do, in fact, have... Can I help him? Mind and searching will help. Tracking will give a bonus D12. I will give you a bonus D8 because I think you guys know Eldritch. I have survival. Okay. Which maybe also applies to like some searching checks. Um, it applies to searching checks when looking for food. You're not looking for food. Can yeah. I use leadership to kind of get crew to help us out? Um, yes. Don't bother rolling. You will get a D12 bonus when you put the crew to work because he just orders them to do it. All right, there you go, Donovan. Go for it. Oh, what's that D8 there for? Uh, the D8 is because I'm going to assume that Eldritch like, bragged about it or told somebody some clue about where it's hidden. Yeah, I I'm also Kali I'm would probably know. <laughs> Kali doesn't know. I watched you guys moving stuff around there it's for a supply. I could re-roll one of those. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to make that the D12. Um, Eldritch, didn't you roll three successes to be able to hide all this? Yeah. Yeah. Two. Well, uh, this is embarrassing because we've got all this cargo that we've loaded here, and we're not really sure uh, where we actually put that. It's going to take us some time to find it because you oh, only have two word. successes, and you need three. Unless one of you wants to burn a person, uh, uh, unless Donovan wants to burn your personality, Donovan. I will person find it. I am obsessed with these boxes. I've got to find this. The stars have told me I have to be bold here. I will follow through. The box, right, we'll the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? A. Maximum Three. session. When everyone is insistent you can't find it, eventually you'll shift some other boxes and say, look, it's right there. Or barrels, anyway, because most everything is barrels. Um, Aha, oh, I'm always right. That's where we put it. Wow, Elter's really good at hiding stuff. Oh, man, that's kind of weird. You think, you think he's hiding anything else from us? Nah. I am the Dunwasser hide-and-seek hide and champion. Um, Nothing hides from me. Trevor Sano will squint and say, well, these are indeed, um, uh, it does indeed have markings uh, that I recognize. Um, these are indeed uh, Libertalian <clears throat> markings and all my stars. Well, uh, yes. Um, he immediately, like, straightens up. He goes, oh, yes, uh, we will take these. Uh, thank you so much for bringing them. Uh, I'm going to have to send someone down to... Uh, uh, Tre Trevor's going to pause and say, this is an indulgence, right? They didn't send you here with a bill or anything, right? Our orders were simply to bring it here. We're just bringing the boxes and leaving them. Listen, you must be really tired from your long journey, and you must be worried about your friends. Why don't you come up to the Order of St. John, where we're having a festival of perpetual motion or something like that, and come up and enjoy, uh, um, uh, you know, our, uh, enjoy our hospitality for a bit? That sounds delightful. He smiles in a disarming way that only a shrew can. I'm pleased to hear this. Uh, may the light shine upon you. Uh, all right, let's get these uh, unloaded. And and that's it, right? Just these three with the seal? Just the three with the seal, unless you're interested in some spices. I think it was six. That's not my place to say. Uh, the master capitular would have to... You would have to make negotiations with him. But I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. Yeah, we have six boxes, not three. There we go. Making sure. <clears throat> oh, six All right. boxes. All right. Well, let's get those unloaded. 
Um, I assume you yell at your guys to unload them, and you will be led up the long. And of course, like this is like a, a ridiculous tiny stairway that's carved into the rock that looks ridiculously unsafe. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Commander, I need you to order your men to do this. Make a roll of will and leadership. Give it, give it, do. Will is d6, so... It's uh, not 2d6. Double time. No one screws up. Uh, even Umaya isn't drunk today. How many leadership dice do you have? I'm that incorrectly. I rolled two will die on accident. So the first six isn't anything. Right. But but you've got leadership, uh, you've got three dice in leadership? Yeah, I've got three dice in leadership. Oh, wow. Because I think you actually get it from your career, right? I get it. I think so. Career, species, and then actual skill. Right? You don't actually get leadership from species. I can't think of any species that gives leadership. Yeah, I don't think oh, so. excuse me. I did that wrong. I have three marks in it of D8s. Right, so you don't have three D8s, you just have one D8. Yeah. So you have two successes. Yeah, that's okay. still plenty. I'm about and to say, is, I'm a leadership like, guy too, oh. and I've only got two leadership that's guys. That's still good, yeah, but, but it's not three marks that give you three D8s, it's three marks that gives you yeah. one. Yeah, okay. It's the yeah, third yeah. die size. Okay, good. Uh, just keep that in mind in the future. But anyway, you are no major, I just had you make that roll, see if there's any... Emergent events, and there aren't. No one screws up. Two successes is good. They do their jobs. Uh, I mean, it's a little slow and harrowing, but they lead you up the, the, the stairs itself go through. This is like the tiniest town outside of the fort itself, uh, where, uh, and it's all like, uh, there's religious imagery everywhere. You can see the octogram of creation, that eight pointed star uh, everywhere. And, um, uh, you know, it's mostly just a storehouse and people just kind of like look at you curiously because they don't get visitors a lot. And then you're led through the gate uh, into uh, this fort looks a little weird. Uh, it, 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 it's built in sort of a, a, a triangle. It's got the stones outside of dirt. So it's designed to be reasonably cannon proof. But uh, it looks like they called it outside engineers. It's got a little too many arches in it to be Calabrese. It looks like they might have found an old uh, fort and repurposed it. Okay. Uh, and shored it up. But inside, you, uh, if any of you have been in a religious place, you'll immediately recognize uh, one uh, problem is there aren't a lot of stairs because a lot of the people here are birds. Most of the people in the Order of St. John are falcons. And... Wonderful. Yep. And a lot of them, you know, look at you uh, sideways or sizing you up. But uh, Trevor, the shrew, just kind of waves at everybody uh, and says, uh, and anyway, you're, you're probably curious with your friend Eldritch. Let me show you our wonderful hospital. And then we'll cut to, this is our hospital. Observe all the sick people. This is quite a few. I believe you mentioned you had uh, travelers who come here to get healed. Uh, yes, the lepers we keep on the east side of the island, but the uh, people here, we try to ease their suffering, uh, usually through prayer, and sometimes it works. For example, here's your friend Eldritch, who I believe has made a miraculous recovery, and they introduce you to Eldritch. Just wondering, the entire island is uh, secular, or? Uh, well, yes, everyone here. Uh, this is the Order of St. John. Uh, this entire island uh, yeah, in fact, I should explain that. You guys probably don't know over Great Island. Uh, I'm, yeah, Trevor here will explain. This entire island uh, is an indulgence from the great caliph of Anatolia to uh, the Church of Salmer. And uh, Pontiff uh, created this entire capitular order where we offer succor and help to those in need and spread the great word. And nothing else. But, I mean, this place is basically a giant religious center. How does it compare, say, to, like, the Church of Silvermere? Well, we're part of it. Um, but, I mean, how, is... the actual... No, I don't mean, like, the church is an organization. I mean, the church is the physical entity. The um... Oh, you mean the, the, the cathedral to Des Moines? The cathedral uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mis misremembered the name. Right. 
Oh yeah, well the cathedral is freaking huge. It's a block-sized building that that took centuries to build. Yeah, but this is like a giant fort, which is essentially everything that's in the cathedral right. in one island. This is a fort. This is a small fort. Uh, they they clearly have cannons. So not as impressive is what you're saying. Not as impressive. It is an impressive fort. Uh, I mean, if you guys are looking for the political thing, it it was. Um, this is basically a military fort that, that, that the Pope owns. And we're a bunch of Falcons and other people who train all day as paladins, as soldiers of God. All right. Oh, no, we're in the Templars. No. You are literally. Deus Volt. You, Deus Volt, you are literally in the Templars. That is what a Capitular Order is. A All Templar right. Order. Yes, we really don't have any Holy Land to march on, so there's not going to be any Crusades. Well, no. Uh, we, the, the Iron Claw world doesn't have the concept of Crusades, but this does mean that you are not te you are not on Calabrese ground. You are on Holy ground, which means you are bound by Holy Law while you're here. Which technically means we don't have to honor your nobility while you're here. But we're going to do that anyway, because we're nice. I wasn't flaunting my nobility. I have no idea. That's fine. I understand holy gods come before men. I, see, that's what I've been telling people. We already Wait. like you. You said why don't gods. You, uh, why, why don't you come with us and uh, break bread with us and drink beer? Because we're monks, so we have beer. <laughs> <laughs> it is where keeping carousing would have been nice. Yeah, wait a second, Samuel. Didn't you give that up? Uh, yes, I, I no longer drink. That's a uh, teetotaler. That's giving pretty... up the liquid bread. We should introduce you to our other teetotalers so you can have long conversations about how not having fun is, is the best thing you can have. <laughs> <laughs> Come, pirate, meet our monk who also doesn't drink. Yes. While I'm here, I am interested in the wisdom of your order. Do you happen to have a library? There are definitely plenty of books I'd like to look up, and perhaps maybe a few navigation charts for the local Well, shows. we do have a scriptorium. Many books that uh, come through here, uh, we know that the liber... Um, do you have gossip as a skill? No. I don't. Why don't you, why don't you make a roll of mind... Uh, and since you're asking with the library, mind, academics, and gossip. And if somebody wants to assist you, you can go ahead and roll. I'll assist. Because we are willing to talk to you, especially uh, over a hearty meal, but we will, But in game terms, it's not that NPCs aren't willing to talk, it's that gossip is the ability to get them to talk about stuff you actually care about. Right, and I am not a great conversationalist, but man, do I know stuff. So at the very least, I will connect with them on that. Okay, now, now Sam, are you rolling three d8s because you have three marks in gossip again, or that's his last roll? He hasn't rolled That's his last roll. Oh, phew. Okay, okay I'm, uh, I'm also I want to do assist. Now. Yeah. How do I? What do I roll for assist? Mind. You roll mind, academics, and gossip, and if you can get a four or better, you throw a d8 onto uh, Donovan's pile. So two d8 for you, Donovan. All right. That'll give me plenty, I think. Right. And it looks like. One, from two, us. three. So, so you have a conversation, Eldritch, you were feeling much better. <clears throat> yeah, I'll be having like, conversations on the side of like, how does your order uh, mix up um, saints and uh, religious figures like that with the Church of Silver Mare when there's only one. There's well, only we're, one. A we're a capitular order, which means that uh, we have a number of different denominations here. We... Uh, uh, you, know, you know, mostly we attract penitents because penitents tend to be the most violent and zealous of people. Uh, and we don't, uh, 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 you know, Trevor said, I myself am a penitent. Uh, and the master capitular, uh, however, is a high more. So, uh, yeah, I might be high more, but, you know, uh, he, he says it in bigger words than I would. He says, like, He's kind of like in you know the high more uh, beliefs that uh, the universe is pain and pain is suffering. Yeah, I would say who are the uh, ones with the whips. I was trying to remember their names. The self flagellants. Yeah, flagellants. So that's it. Yeah, you might want to watch out for uh, you. What you know, the master capitular takes this very seriously. Uh, you're speaking of crusades. It. 
the 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 master himself, you know, is basically feels that uh, while we're here to offer, we're a hospital, we're here to offer medical aid. The fact that we also don't, you know, have nothing to intervene with. He keeps drilling the troops over and over again, and we haven't had anything to route out. There are rumors um, for the longest time. Uh, there have been, there's been talk about possibly mounting a crusade.